According to the map on my personal video screen, the British Airways 747 was halfway over the Atlantic. If the plane were to lose an engine, I reasoned, we had a good chance of just making the tip of Greenland. I don't like to fly, especially over large bodies of roiling black water. But this was the red eye from New York. All the shades were down and the lights had been dimmed, so I didn't feel I was flying in a plane so much as sitting in a particularly comfortable doctor's office waiting for a minor surgical procedure. I was filled with dread, but only a little more dread than normal. After all, in just a few hours, I would be in London, a place I consider to be perfect. Something was bothering me, and I was unable to concentrate on the book I was trying to read. My nose, specifically, was giving me trouble. Not to be uncouth, but there was just something stuck in there. I removed a tissue from the pocket of my blazer. This was a new experience for me because I never wear jackets. And here I was, in a fine jacket, with a pressed dress shirt, slacks, black Gucci loafers. Not only this, but I had thought ahead to bring a small pack of tissues. Last time I came to London, I dressed like I do every day, jeans with a t-shirt and a baseball cap. I was mortified when each restaurant I went to required I wear their outdated loner jacket, kept on hand expressly for losers like me. I was determined not to make this mistake again in the more formal United Kingdom, so I'd packed nothing but business attire. I blew my nose, trying to make as little noise as possible. And then I looked down and saw blood on my shirt. Three slug-shaped stains and a constellation of splatter. Dark red, purple-black almost, against the sky blue of my shirt. Stupidly, I pulled the tissue away from my nose to inspect it, and more blood dribbled onto my shirt. I was horrified, but more than this, I was fascinated, because there was absolutely no pain and quite a lot of blood. Quickly, I brought the tissue back up to my nose and reached for the napkin next to my water bottle. I pressed this against my nose as well, but almost immediately it was soaking red. I am one of those people who tends to get bloody noses easily. My brother is the same way. We spent much of our childhoods hemorrhaging, and it's a wonder, really, both of us made it to maturity without transfusions. Normally, my nose stops bleeding after just a couple of minutes, but as I sat there on the plane, pressing the blood-soaked tissue against my face, I sensed that this was no ordinary nosebleed. Something about the cabin pressure had made it much worse than usual. I needed more tissues. I needed them immediately. Or else, I needed a blowtorch to cauterize the wound myself. I unbuckled my seatbelt with my free hand and stood. Trying not to draw attention to myself, I was relieved that the cabin lights were low and many people were sleeping. As I turned to walk back to the lavatory, I saw a passenger seated on the opposite aisle, reading a book. The cover was orange and featured a young boy with a box on his head. I couldn't read the title, but I didn't need to, because it was burned into my brain. I'd written the book. She glanced up at me just as I began walking, and then she looked back down at her book. But right away, she looked back up, eyes wide.